What a song. And then I want to know more. Amen. Amen. It's kind of my message this morning. You know, but it should be all of our, in our hearts, deep in our hearts. As Christians, you know, God is so good to us. We can never hope to repay him. I think I said that in, in Sunday school. I could never hope to repay God for what he's done for me. Um, if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Give you a minute to get there. But, you know, do you have that assurance? Do you have that assurance in your heart? You know, as I've said before when I was here, you know, I'm here to stir your mind. I'm here to stir you up. I'm here to, to get you examining yourself. We don't, we don't need to examine others. We need to examine ourselves. You know, I'm not accountable for others. I'm accountable for me. You're not accountable for others. You're accountable for yourself. So we have to look into ourselves. You know, and a lot of times we'll look in there and we won't like what we see. Well, who can change that? I'm the only one that can change me. When God speaks to me, when God shows me something, I have to act upon it. If I don't, then there's something there that shouldn't be there. Because it's not what God wants. But that blessed assurance only comes through his grace. Amen, and we're going to read a little bit about it, but I'd just like to say, you know, and then, how can you uh, not have that assurance and say you're a Christian? You know, anybody can say they're a Christian, but it doesn't make you a Christian. Anybody can say they're saved, but it doesn't make them saved. And I've said a lot of times, you know, I can read enough books. To convince people I'm a brain surgeon, but it doesn't make me a brain surgeon. You know? I can read enough about flying an airplane and convince people I'm a pilot, but it doesn't make me a pilot. You know, we can read enough Bible to convince ourselves we're where God wants us to be, and we're not. How close, how close are you to God? Think about that. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're going to start reading in, in verse 1. And I'm going to ask a little, I'm going to ask God to just bless his reading. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come unto you at this time, Lord, we ask God that you'll open our hearts, Lord, to receive, Lord, what you have for us here, God. We ask, Lord, that you'll just move in a special way, God, this morning. Touch each one, Lord, as we praise you and glorify you. Give you, Lord, all the glory and all the praise, Lord, for all things, Lord. Lord, it's not me, Lord, but it is you, Lord, as I give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me as on one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle 
because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly that they all, I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Amen. I look at these scriptures and I get to thinking, you know, by the grace of God, here am I. I am nothing, but it's by God's grace that I, I'm able to be here. It's by God's grace that I'm saved. It's by God's grace that I have what I have. It's, you know, people might say, I've worked hard to get what I got. We work hard and we get things, but it's not the things of God that he's talking about. Excuse me. It's not the things of the world that we gain that he's talking about here. It's by the grace of God that, that we have our salvation. You know, we all know the, the, the uh, story of Paul, how he was struck down on the road, how he went about before that time persecuting the Christians. He had the power to kill, to legally kill. All he had to do is say, kill him. He's preaching Christ. Kill him. Get rid of him. He had that power. But look what God did for him. God took him from that and set him up to be one of the greatest apostles out there. What did, have you done? What have I done? For God. Where am I with God? That assurance. How close are we to God? How close are you to God? How close can we get to God? These are things we need to look at in our own lives. And not worry about the person sitting next to us. In Sunday school this morning we, we had a conversation talking about. This is the only Bible a lot of people will see. Is the life you carry. The life you have. People are looking at us. Waiting for us to make that one mistake. Because that's what they're going to. That's what they're going to base everything on. They don't listen to the scripture you give them. They don't listen to all the good things you do. They see it. They know it. But they're waiting to, to be able to put blame on you. And blame on me. And say look at this. But what they don't understand is by the grace of God that we are what we are. He came and he died upon that cross that we might live. And that might, we might have life abundantly. Not just living, but have it abundantly. How do we have life abundantly? We have it through Jesus Christ. We have him living in our hearts. We have him as, as our only, our only salvation it's not the things I accumulate in this world that are going to save me it's not the food I have in my pantry that's going to feed me but it is the word of God it all comes to us through his grace his grace is what brings us where we are today having that assurance that only comes by grace having the things in our Christian life that only come by his grace, his word, his life. We look here, Paul is saying, look at me, I'm the loneliest. I did all these bad things, but his grace came unto me. His grace came unto me, and here I am standing before you. It's not because I'm such a great speaker, which I'm not. But I try to do what God has put in my heart. I try to do the very best I can for God. And as I've, I've said time and time again, I feel like the least. You know, I've, I've said it here before. I have a ninth grade education. I'm not, I'm not a big scholar. I don't claim to be a Bible scholar. I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to be where God wants me to be. And that's how we have to be. I fail in that a lot of times. I'm only human. I'm not perfect. And I don't want anybody to look at me as if I'm perfect. 
But there's people in this world that look at us and they expect you to be perfect. They expect me to be perfect. When we stumble and fall, they see that and they will spread that. Oh, they will spread that. But they don't want to spread the good things we did. Why? Because they don't have Christ in their heart. All we can do is pray for them. Give them the word. Give it to them freely as Paul is saying here. I give to you what was given to me. I give it freely. Christ said it's freely given. So freely give. We cannot go out and expect people to listen to us. If we're out there living like the world. They'll say there's no difference. There's no difference. They'll look at people and they'll say, and it's a common expression, if he or she's going to heaven, I don't have anything to worry about. I'm going too. But that's not the way to look at it. I can't, I can't go to heaven on what my wife has. She can't go to heaven on what I have. She has to go for herself. I have to go for myself. And that day of judgment, I'm going to stand before God, not for what she's done, but for what I've done. But it's by his grace. We're covered under that blood. We have that blood applied to our lives by his grace. The things we have in this world are by his grace, not by the things that I have done, not by the things that my wife has done to build ourselves up. I can truthfully say I have done nothing to build myself up. I have done a lot to tear myself down. Because we need to be about his business, not ours. Doing what God wants us to do, not what I want to do. Be there for him. Spread the word. We're all, for better lack, ambassadors. We're all preachers. We're all witnesses of what God can do. And I gave a witness this morning, and I'll give it here now because it's a praise to God. And, and I thank him for what he's done for me. A, a few months back, I had pain in my side, my right side. My wife said, that's the same place that I had pain, and it was my gallbladder. So I went to the doctor. They sent me for an ultrasound. They come back and said, well, the ultrasound shows your gallbladder working perfect. There's nothing wrong there, but we found that your liver is enlarged. And there's a cyst on your liver. Well, I knew there was a cyst on my liver, but <clears throat> they sent me for these tests and an ultrasound, not an ultrasound, an MRI. I go through all this, and it's been about two months now, two and a half, and I went to the doctor Thursday of this week or last week, and the doctor, he says, well, we can't find anything wrong. Um, all your blood works perfect. Our test for cancer comes back negative. We don't see anything out of the way in the, in the MRI except your, your liver's uh, larger than our perimeters we like them to be in. And he says, I don't recommend doing anything else because there's nothing wrong. Okay, there's nothing wrong because God says there was nothing wrong. Through prayer, if there was something, God took it away. I don't know if there was or not, but I still give him the praise and the glory for those tests coming back all negative. Because the only explanation I have, they said something was wrong, they sent me, and then when it comes down to it, when it's all said and done, after prayer... People of God praying, it all comes back and there's nothing wrong. So the only thing I can attribute it to, it's not medicine, it's not man, but it's God. By His grace, by His grace, it was taken care of. And I'll stand on that. It's by God's grace. God. Paul here, you know, we all know 
the things Paul went through. He says here that for I am the least of the apostles that am not meant to be called and not meet to be called an apostle. He says, I'm not worthy to be called an apostle. What makes him worthy? The grace of God. It's by grace we are saved. I, I, I can't seem to, to, to ex express it enough, you know. We take too many things for, for granted in this world. We take too many things as, as being, this is what it is. And it's not going to change. It can change. It can change through prayer. It, I don't know why sometimes it seems like it takes so long. But our time's not God's time. And God's time's not our time. God has his reasons. I cannot stand upon uh, my reasons and expect to succeed. But I can stand upon God and stand upon what he has for me. And I can expect to succeed. Because God will not fail us. God will not. He will not. And... I want to ask you this question. How close are you with God? How close do you think you are with God? However close it is, it's not close enough. We can never get close enough to God. I haven't seen anybody walk from this earth with God. As far as I know, there's only been one person. That's being close to God. That's where we need to be striving to get. That when the resurrection comes, we're going to be changed and, and go with him. If we die, we're going to be with him. We cannot lose in any way we go if we truly have him in our heart. That's why it's important for us to examine our hearts daily. Look upon our life daily to be where God wants us to be. Peter, uh, Peter, Paul here, he's looking upon his life when he's writing these things to, to the church in Corinth, and he's telling them, you know, examine yourself. Look at me. I, I was the worst among you. I, I persecuted you. I hated you. I wanted to get rid of all of you so I could enlarge myself in my standing with the church. It's not the church we need to be worried about. It's the Savior, the Father that we need to be worried about. How close we are to Him. Not how close we are to the pastor. Not how close we are to the deacons. Not how close we are to the song leader. But how close are we to God? You know, I hear a lot of people talk about how big their church is. And I see it a lot of places where <clears throat> they can't even tell you how many members they have, much less name their members. And you wonder, I wonder, how's the fellowship in those places? How close are these people? Is it just a gathering place for them? Or is it a place of worship for them? We look at things in this fleshly life as being all there is a lot of times. We get complacent in where we sit in the church. We get complacent of our life serving Christ. I'm comfortable where I'm at. I don't want to dig any deeper because then I might have to do something. I don't want to, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But I want to be sitting right here because I'm comfortable. I'm satisfied. How can we be satisfied with, with where we are with God? How can we be satisfied Sitting and doing nothing. 
when there's lost souls out there in this world. You know, something was said in, in Sunday school this morning also. I don't want them dying and saying, you didn't tell me. You didn't try to bring me to Christ. And now I'm spending an eternity in, in hell. We're all to bring God's word to the people we meet. A lot of times it's not easy. Because his grace came for everybody in this world. Not just for me. The Bible says it's not the sick. I mean, it's not the well, the healthy, that need a physician. It's the sick. We have to bring his word. We cannot get complacent. We cannot be in a place to where I'm comfortable. If you're comfortable, you need to look at yourself. You need to say, what can I do for God? Where can I work for God? Who can I talk to? We was in Baltimore on a on a, a little mission trip last year, no year before last, and I had a a feller that was there on the trip with us, and he told me something that really really moved my heart, really got me to thinking. He said he prays every day for God to send somebody or send him where he can witness to somebody that's not saved and I'm I got to thinking about that I said I am really lacking I don't pray that way I don't I wasn't asking God to send me or to send someone that needed him I was going about just going out there and just Doing what I do, you know. But to actually pray that God would send someone to me, it never crossed my mind until that day. And it made me feel about this talk. That I wasn't doing that. That I was lacking. Why wasn't I wanting God to help me, God to send me, God to show me, to talk to someone to spread his grace? There's people out there that needs his grace. And it's all about his grace. It's not about my preaching. It's not about my words. It's his that we need to get out. We need to get out to people. We need to let people know where we stand. The world's not shy on showing where it stands. We see people every day in, in stores, on the highways, um, everywhere we go, restaurants, they're not ashamed of what they do. Why do we go into a restaurant and, and mumble the prayer for our food? Why aren't we out there just as loud and boisterous as they are when we ask that blessing on our food? When we thank God for what he's done for us in our life, why aren't we shouting it out from the rooftop? Why aren't we letting them know there's a better life than what you're living? There's more to that money than the, there's more to life than what that money brings. There's more to it. It's not about what's here on this earth. It's about what's to come. We have eternal life. Christ gave that to us when he died on that cross. When he gave up the ghost, the Bible tells us. They didn't kill him. He gave it up willingly. Willingly for us. So that we could be covered. And we sit back and we don't do. We think we're, we're good enough. We need to be out and about. We need to be doing what God's called us to do. Peter, Paul here, I, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Peter and Paul, they, they mess me up. <laughs> Paul here, you know, he's saying, look at all the things I did, the things that, that God wanted done, and I was fighting. I was fighting it. 
Why would he save me? Why would he send his grace unto me? All these things. I, surely he would have struck me dead on that road instead of just blinding me and sending me somewhere to talk to somebody. You know? Surely he could have saved a lot of people by just striking me dead right there. But God didn't. Because he loves everybody. He loves the sinner as much as he loves me. He came to save the world, not condemn the world. You'll find that in John 3, 16 and I think it's 17. It might be 18. But you'll find it there. The world's already condemned itself is what the Bible tells us. He didn't come to condemn the world, but the world has condemned itself already. But we need to be doing God's work, okay? We need to be out in the stores, everywhere. You get an opportunity to talk to someone about God, we need to be talking to them. We need to be witnessing to him. You know, it's like this life we live is a great witness. But as I said, if we're out there in their conversations, in their lifestyle, where's the difference? The Bible tells us his people will be a peculiar people. And if we blend in, and if we're just like them, how are we peculiar? We're supposed to be different. The Bible tells us we got to be different. There's a difference when he comes into our heart. I'm sure each and every one sitting here felt that difference when he came into your heart. If you're saved, you know it because it's in your heart. You felt the change in your life when he came in. When you accepted him, when his grace just covered your body, you felt it. If you didn't, then I encourage you to come down. These are always open. I'm sure Brother Sal and Brother James will tell you, these altars are always open. You don't have to wait for, a, for an altar call. God moves upon your heart. Come on down. That's how we need to be. It might not be for salvation. It might be for a sick friend. It might be for a sick family member. It might be for a, a financial need. That's what these are for. These altars down here are for prayer. And when we're not using them, we're letting God down. How do, how do we communicate with God? It's through prayer. Through prayer. Talking to him. How can we receive the blessings he has for us if we never, never talk to him? And there's more to prayer than just asking for something. There's prayers of praise. We read them in, in, in Psalms all the time. Prayers of praise. Psalms is a book of songs, which is a lot of them are prayers where they sang the praise to God. We, as Christians, and I can't stress it enough, we have to be where God wants us to be, not where we want. Not sitting in our comfort seat, not sitting in our comfort zone. Peter here, Peter, there I go again. Paul, <laughs> Paul, Paul here, he's saying, you know, don't look at me. You, knew, you know what I was. Don't look at me. Look at the one that covered me with grace. Because it's by that grace that I stand before you is what he's telling them. It's through that grace that you can overcome anything that comes against you in this world. <clears throat> And as I said, if we're saved, if God, if Christ is living in our heart, we can't lose. If it's a, if it's a physical thing, 
We can't lose. If, if we get a healing from it, we win. If we die from it, we win. We cannot lose. Too many times we look at it as, well, we prayed and prayed for brother so-and-so, but he died anyway. And we look at it as a loss. It's not a loss. It's a win. Brother so-and-so was saved. Saved by grace. He won. He ran the race. He's with the Lord. It's hurtful to us to lose a loved one, but he won or she won. And if that tumor that they said was going to kill you, they successfully operated and removed it, and now you're cancer-free, you win. So how can you lose? You cannot lose. It's impossible. And that's what he's trying to get across here. It's impossible. If we're serving God and doing what he wants, it's impossible for us to lose. We're covered under that grace. So any way we look at it, we're, we're going to win. There's no losing here. None whatsoever. But in our, in our cardinal minds, we get it. We look too much to the flesh. And it's very, very easy to do. To looking at the flesh. But let's not look at the flesh. Let's look at the spiritualness of it. Look at where our soul, our heart, where is it? Where do you stand with God? How close are you to him? Are you bumping elbows? Are you 100 feet over here? Well, I'm, I'm kind of scared to go over there because <clears throat> I might have to give up that thing I do on Tuesday nights. Or I might not be able to go over here. Or I might not be able to talk to my buddies and, with those jokes and, and all the things they do if I move that way any. So I'm going to stay right here. When we should be over there. Get rid of all that stuff. I want to be rubbing elbows. I want to be with the one. You know that's the utmost. The highest. The king of kings. Our savior. Our savior. Think about that. He is the one. That we need to look forward to. Not, not the people around us. Don't condemn your neighbor because they're, they're out there living the world. That's all they know. They haven't felt Christ in their heart. And it's up to us to let them know about it. Not go over there with a baseball bat trying to drive it in their head. You know. But just when you speak to them, just let that be part of the conversation. To the person behind the counter that's, that's having a bad day and just has a bad attitude. Let them know God loves them. Let them know you understand what they're going through. And the reason you understand it is because you was there once yourself. But it's only by the grace of God we have the peace that only comes from God. You know, I used to be a, a, a very angry, hateful man. But it's through the peace of God the peace that came in my heart when I knelt at that altar at that scene that I don't have that anger like that anymore. It'll try to rise up, and it will. But I have to put it down. I have to ask forgiveness. That's part of being human. We can always ask forgiveness, and God is always there to give that forgiveness if we truly mean it. We can't just have a word salad with it. You know, you can say the greatest, longest prayer in the world and not mean it, and you're, you've achieved nothing. You know, you can stand up in church and give, a, give a, a, a closing prayer or an opening prayer, and it can be the most eloquent in the world. But if it didn't come from your heart, you've done nothing. You got people looking at you saying, oh, man, he can really talk good. Man, that really sounded great. Oh, but that's all you got. It helps you know where nothing with Christ. Helps you nothing with God. What comes from the heart. It could be four or five words. But if it's from the heart, it's going to touch God. 
But if it's not from the heart, it's not going to touch him because he won't hear it. <clears throat> the Bible tells us to, uh, a person of a double mind it doesn't need to expect anything from God. The person that's in today, out tomorrow, in today, out tomorrow, double mind, tossed to and fro, don't know what they believe. They want to believe when it's convenient, but when it's not, they don't want to believe. You know, it's like I'll talk Bible with Brother Sal, but when I'm at work, I'm around those guys. They all cuss and they all tell dirty jokes, so I don't want to be the odd man out. So when I'm over here at work, I'm going to be like them. It's more convenient. Where's our convenience with God when it comes to that? It's not there. Where's our relationship with God? We have to build that relationship. And in building that relationship, we build unity. We build a lot of, well, in today's world, you'd call it, I think they call it street cred. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is, Trust in him for all your needs. Open your heart to what he has, not what we desire. You know, I, I desire a lot of stuff. And a lot of it is, it's not bad, but it's not God. You know what I'm saying? It, it's material things that I want in this world. I want me with it, you know. Um... But what I do have, God has blessed me with. And it's, it's by him, not me, that it's there. God will work and do for us if we work and do for him. You know, God's not lax, promised us. You know, he's promised us eternal life. What more, what more can we ask for? You know, eternal life. Peace. Once he's in your heart, you have that peace that, you know, it's a peace I've never had. In all the years that, that I was out there, that peace wasn't there. But now that peace is there. I don't worry about things I used to worry about. I don't worry about what's coming next week. I don't worry about what's coming tomorrow. <clears throat> God will take care of it no matter what it is. So, in closing, i just like to say God should be utmost and first in our lives. I thank God for what he's done for me. I thank him for the blessings he's bestowed upon me. I thank him for the peace that he's given me. I thank him for all the things that I have in this world that he's given me. People say, well, you had to work for it and you paid for it. He allowed me to be able to work. There's millions of people out there that can't work. He's allowed me, he's given me a, a, a fairly healthy body to be able to, to work every day. I thank him for that. I thank him for the things he's done. I thank him for three wonderful boys. I thank him for three wonderful daughters. They're married to my boys. They're my daughters now. They're not, they're not daughter-in-laws. They're family. And I thank him for eight wonderful grandchildren. You know, God, he's just blessed, plain and simple. None of them's ever been in jail. None of them's ever been addicted to drugs. None of them's been in trouble with the, with the law. None of my grandchildren have. Why? Because God has touched my family. God has touched my family. I truly believe it. And I stand behind it. You know, <clears throat> let me share this with you. I have a problem with my shoulders. And I can barely raise my arms up past my shoulders. The pain is, will go over the roof, out the roof. And 
I keep saying I'm going to call the doctor, I'm going to go to the doctor, and I'm going to get this taken care of. But about the time I go to call that doctor, it pops in my head, give God one more week. Give God one more week. And I say that because of a sister that we had in our church that had breast cancer. And this was between the size of a walnut and an egg. And they, doctor puts her in the hospital. We're going to have to operate. We're going to have to remove it. Start your own treatment. Doctors came in to mark it to where they wanted to cut and so forth. And she asked the doctor, she said, can we wait one more day? One more day. I want to give God one more day. I want the church praying for me one more day. He says, okay, but this is going to happen tomorrow. It's, we're not putting it off no more. The next morning he comes back in and he's doing an examination of where he marked her and so forth. And he's like, <clears throat> we got to send you down for another gram. He says, why? He says, well, I can't find it. Huh? Think about it. What God can do if we're just faithful to him. You know, she never had that surgery. She didn't die from breast cancer. She's no longer with us, but it's not from breast cancer. It was gone. Why? Because of her faith. Because of the faith of people praying. And God faithful to answer those prayers. Why he does it for one and not another, I cannot tell you. God has his reasons. How close can we get to God? We're all covered by grace if we're saved. What separates us, he gives each of us the same measure. I don't get no more than you do. But it's how close we work ourselves for what God puts us out there to do. If you envy somebody because they seem to be closer to God than you, it's nobody's fault but your own. You can be as close as you want to be. The thing is, you ought to be want to be so close you're touching him. <laughs> That's a lot of people touching God. But he's God. It's okay. He can be everywhere at one time. He can be... I'll stop because I can go on and on. But God is so good. And what I'm trying to say is, it's by his grace. It's not by our works, but by his grace. We're all saved to the good works of Jesus Christ. It's not our works that get us there. But once we're there, we have works to do. So <clears throat> I'm going to ask Brother Sal if he will dismiss us in a word of prayer.